Welcome back. Let's continue where we had stopped earlier. We talked about open doors, and now we will talk about wrong words. We know that words carry authority. Uh, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And so when we speak life, that's what we experience, because we are going to eat the fruit of the words that are spoken. If we speak untruth or words that are not aligned to what God is saying in the Bible, then what happens is uh, we are, it becomes an open door, right? the wrong words. Uh, just like if we take a simple example, who we are in Christ, I am a child of God, I am uh, uh, you know, greatly loved by God. This is the reality, spiritual reality. But if I speak opposite to that, and if I say things like, oh, there's nobody for me, nobody cares, I'm not loved, I'm speaking against the truth or the reality, the spiritual reality. That becomes an open door for the enemy. And he's always waiting when he can catch us. Whenever there is a conflict uh, in, in our either our thoughts or in our words. right? Uh, and so speaking the truth is inviting God to work in our lives. When we declare the word, we know that we, it's it's an open door for God to work in our lives. But when we agree with the enemy and we speak things uh, without any faith or words of unbelief, that becomes an open door for the enemy. So some examples like, um, you know, when we say, uh, I, I, I'm a very sick person, I'm always sick and uh, sickness comes to me uh, or you know like if we have this thought that uh, sickness is from god and he will send sickness every now and then to build me up in his you know in my character and we say that god will do this for me god will always allow sickness it always happens i've noticed so what are we doing we are agreeing with our words we are agreeing and any agreement it's like you're making an agreement with that untruth, and then Satan can work, right? So we have to be so careful with the words that we speak. I know we have discussed so much about words in all, in the course, outside of the course, uh, but it is that important. So never speak, uh, you know, unbelief, defeat, failure, hopelessness over our own lives. Never do that. And never do that even over the people whom God has given us authority over. Right? So let's say in a family setting, you have the husband who's the head of the home or the father who's the head of the uh, father and mother who are uh, head over the children or they, they are the authority over the children. So uh, we, we hopefully in this uh, course later we will see there are authority structures and the words that are spoken, especially by the authority in that person's life, is very valuable. So when uh, parents speak over their children and they say, oh, our, our children, they, they don't study well, they won't get jobs, they will struggle in their life. So those things will happen, actually, because the authority figure is declaring it over those people who have been uh, like, you know, given by God to submit to them. So these are very key things that we must remember, even as a pastor, when we speak over the people, we got to speak blessings. Yes, you know, my people are blessed. Their families are blessed. They are, they are whole uh, emotionally, financially, uh, physically. They, they are strong. They do great exploits for the Lord. Each one is a witness. So when I speak like that as a pastor, in prayer, I make declarations. I speak it over the people. You know, you arise, shine, for the light, for your light has come. There is authority and power released from my words. And that affects people's lives. You got it? So understand the power of words, power of words that we speak all over ourselves. Okay? Now, I don't know if we have discussed this uh, example in your Batch, but imagine there are two people with the same degree at the same experience and they both are applying for the same job one person is confident enough that he'll get the job but then there is the other person who's constantly saying oh 
so many people have applied how will i get the job uh, everyone else uh, is is much more skilled than me how will i get the job he's constantly doing this in his thoughts in his words both have the same everything is same number of years of experience graduating college uh, degree certificate everything is same but you see the way they both are um, expressing their faith or their unbelief it matters it matters what could happen the person who is confident who has faith is more likely to get the job like even in the interview they are more likely to be more confident answer the questions correctly but the one who is going on saying i know i won't get it they will not select me i know they won't select me it even in the interview it pulls down your confidence you are not able to answer right so i'm just giving simple examples for us to understand all these things matter how we speak how we speak over ourselves uh, how we speak over the people whom god has given us let's quickly see if there is a question uh, yeah sister gertrude please go ahead yes sister i want to uh, testify regarding my daughter okay uh, you know i learned in this class only about the strongholds but mm -hmm. i used to think uh, strongholds are of the physical situation and you know uh, like uh, circumstances in our life but i didn't know the strongholds of the mind now my daughter younger daughter she had uh, in usa she had uh, gone through this hypnosis mm -hmm. hypnosis thing you know and then uh, uh and she's always mentally weak you know she's always anxious she gets anxiety and men, uh, mental attack and all that and then she went to the psychic and she consultation mm -hmm. and uh, whenever i used to tell her about the uh, lord and you know to uh, uh, follow jesus and you know like that we have that is the truth she would always go and find out something on the web and she started connecting to the new age uh, uh, movement you know new age and this lady she prayed over her she mm. paid a 100 dollars online mm. and she said i was so much blessed and i got uh, so much of love and you know she made me feel so much so i thought maybe this is some lady healing so i said okay i'll also uh, pray i also want and then uh, she told me that uh, she called the uh, uh, dead people to pray. That uh, put me off and I went and googled and I saw, I said, who are these dead people? They are actually demons. So then I told her, no, I don't want to, to be prayed. And she had already paid $100 for me to, to be prayed. So when she told that lady, you know, that uh, she was very upset and all. But that night, you know, there's somebody is fighting with me, like physically, uh, demonic spirit or witch, I don't know that. She said, mm -hmm. I will take all your spiritual blessings from you. I will take everything that uh, this doesn't belong to you. It belong. And she was so for a, such a long time, I had that tug of war. And finally, I pushed her in so much strength that she left me. Mm. So this is, you know, the powers of darkness we invite in our life. And still my daughter, I started praying for her to break this, pull down the stronghold. Now mm. she's getting delivered one by one from this, you know. So I want to give this testimony to know that how we open doors for the demonic spirit to enter our life. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, sister. Thank you so much for uh, sharing. Uh, and from what you stated it is quite clear you know whatever was going on with the psychic uh, it's demonic it is and it becomes an open door even when we indulge in things like this remember earlier we we said some practices uh, some spiritual practices rituals we end up connecting with um, you know the wrong kingdom so we have to be so very careful. And in the comments here, I think Sister Gertrude was asking the question, hypnosis. You know, how about hypnosis? So um, you see, think just think how God works with us. Does God ever say, OK, come, come to me, but keep your mind aside and come. Just come. Don't use your mind. I don't need your mind. He never does that. There's always our will involved. He wants us to want to come to him. Want he 
wants us to use our mind right so if there is a situation where you're being asked not to use your mind that is very dangerous because that's what satan wants the moment our mind is not active the moment our will is weak what is the advantage he can take over got it so any any kind of practice where they say okay uh, don't think or just just let calm don't don't be active in your mind it's very dangerous because that's like a clear cut way for demons to come and take charge so even hypnosis that's what it does hypnosis what is it like basically their will power their capacity their mental capacity for a small duration of time they kind of numb them using their techniques and then they speak they suggest over the person all that is not biblical you at least like from what we know because uh, you're letting go of that capacity of making decisions right uh, and, and so yeah it's it's not biblical uh, there it has no impact when you're at a distance so if you're not going and sit there if you're not going being seated there to uh -huh. was uh, in a converse or you know to think you're not exposed to it itself you know? uh, what i like mean to how? say is uh, it has no impact on people at distance okay. so if i'm not going and yielding and sitting in front of the person and looking at that thing or engaging in conversation i'm not yeah. exposed to it okay okay uh, but uh, why I, a distance like what if it, you it, uh in this it's, it's like uh, i i go sit there and i say that no i can uh, control myself i'll not yield to the hypnosis thing it's like my foolishness okay. rather than i i i know you if, just if don't I, go there is what you're saying yeah so yeah. then you it has no impact on you yeah okay okay yeah so but uh, i i'm just thinking what if you have stuff that is available like online or you know uh, okay. in videos see everything has an effect whether we like to admit it or not it's just that we should not expose whether we are going physically or through media we are consuming it through media so whenever anything is questionable just stay away from it right that's the best thing to do we don't want to expose ourselves to uh, anything that will be more like a mind control yeah as christians uh, these are things that we have to be careful about uh, yes uh, shani please go ahead yeah i guess i know you said in terms of understanding that life and death and the power of a tongue and we talk about the mind but i thought that you had said earlier some weeks back i mean i mean you said that it's either through our speaking or through our mind i thought you said earlier that not this session but could we expect that the devil can't he he can't he can't know our thoughts so that's why i was a yeah. little bit confused on that can you explain yes. that you meant when you said sure. that yeah so uh right so i i said that uh, the devil cannot know our thoughts okay it's true because we only attribute um excuse me characteristics like omniscience omnipresence and uh, omnipotence only to god okay so we've been saying this repeatedly shani that satan is a limited being he does not have understanding of all things now if he had that then he can know what you and i are thinking but he cannot he does he is not omniscient so then what does he do we've been saying it again and again he is very smart like he can guess right with, with our behaviors with our words with our actions he can gauge what is it that we are going to do so uh i mean that's how it works that's how it works you asked me to explain so i'm explaining but is there like a question attached to it are you trying no, to it, clarify no, something no that explains it just because you said at the beginning that he can get in terms of our if we say something life lives the power of time but you see he can get to our thoughts and then i was thinking like how can he but you just said that he could just kind of um even though he doesn't know our thoughts he can kind of guess i guess what we're going to do even though he doesn't even though he doesn't know we're thinking he can kind of guess and try to I guess he kind of knows. I guess he studies. Us. I guess he studies people enough to kind of maybe guess. Okay, they're going to do this and that, and that's how he can get to people. Am I? Am I? Am I correct? You're right. Yeah, okay. that, that's what he does. He he will gauge, and then conclude. 
so in a way actually you know our declarations will will help because uh, maybe i'm fearful but i'm saying hey the righteous are bold as a lion and satan is looking at me and he is going oh she's already bold like let me not even try let me go so he can he can just understand by our actions our behavior and the way we uh, you know appear right so uh, that that's how it is uh, shani okay yeah thank you I understand yeah uh, but of course he can also have past information see past information that any any anybody can have so you know sometimes we say that people are able to tell oh you you took a, a train from this station and you did this and that so in the past if you've done things and someone's coming to us like a prophetic word and you know I, i'm not talking about uh, a believer like unbelievers when they do these things like uh, you made this decision you went to the school can the kingdom of darkness have that information they can that's not surprising you know it'll be like okay tell me something new <laughs> because that information anybody can have and the demonic world can have it but you see sometimes the enemy uses that and they uh, you know like there are people who tell this happened in your life that happened and those who have no clue about the spiritual realm uh, they get fascinated they're like how did they know then there must be you know god and this connection and all but not really the demons can know what we have done and uh, what has happened in the past uh, that's nothing special actually right but future they can't tell because they are not god only god knows the god knows the future things that are going to happen um or all right yes uh, shani so i guess that's how like mediums i guess they call them mediums and psychics yes. can know some people's past and like they think yes in it but because the demons and devils tell them and stuff is that correct oh, okay yeah so i mean we uh, there are I, i don't know too much about you know these these practices but i have heard that uh, you know they hear voices they hear they get impressions where are they getting all this from mediums the demons the demons are telling them they are empowering them giving them suggestions because they have opened themselves up to the demons so that's how it works Okay, so yeah, uh -huh. sorry. Were our prayers also overheard? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, so yes, the see he can hear us when we speak something. Satan can hear us. Okay, but I I don't think we should be so worried about it. Like you never say anything, you never write anything. It's fine. Like we can put down our some of our thoughts and, and all that. But tongues he can't. You pray tongues he can't understand what you're praying. Okay. Yes. More questions. Please go ahead. Oh no, that was my question about to ask. Can he understand tongues? But you just said it. That's why I lowered my hand. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Tongues he cannot understand. Obviously. So we can speak away. That's not a problem. So yeah, our our words can give an open door to the devil. So never speak unbelief. never speak fear and doubt instead declare the word over our lives okay and uh, uh, that will keep us protected our situations life situations uh, we we we've, we've been saying that satan is very strategic right so he also sees the circumstances that we are in and uh, when he wants to get us usually the best time for him would would be when either we are very uh, sad because something has happened in our lives or let's say we have done some amazing work we have accomplished something usually what happens when we accomplish something big right uh, you feel like okay now i can take a rest so we let down our guard we feel like okay now i need to relax for some time it's okay you know i i just entertain myself uh i i need to sort of you know give myself that space both are dangerous and you this is what satan is looking for he's either looking for us when we are down and out 
because he knows we are so vulnerable any suggestion he puts in our minds we will be more uh, what can you say accepting of the suggestions right when when we are going through pain or grief similarly when we are uh, resting after an accomplishment there also we are vulnerable because anything the enemy brings in at that time we are like sponge we may absorb it so on both these occasions it's best to be on your guard and if you know yourself really well you know what you should be doing what you should not be doing when you're feeling very low you, if you are feeling tempted that yeah i might end up doing that just don't go there if you speak to someone and you know that you'll go down the wrong road just don't speak to that person so that's why i was saying we have to evaluate ourselves we know ourselves better if there is a chance that i might fall uh in my moment of weakness or let's say i've done so well okay uh then also i'm very vulnerable i've got to be careful because the guard is usually low so situations so satan looks for these moments you know moments of great tragedy moments of great victory uh and then he makes the move on our lives and so we have to be very very alert okay uh let's keep moving on violations and intrusions so we've seen mind games we've seen open doors uh and open doors because of sin because of words that are spoken and because of situations and uh, now we will look at violations and intrusions so you know what this is this is like we've been saying uh the thief enters from the back door okay so quietly entering when you're not supposed to enter that is what we call as a uh, trespassing or violation or intrusion okay and satan loves to do that now he already knows that certain <coughs> certain areas or you know in our life he cannot intrude he already knows that but he will still try he will still try to get it so imagine imagine i'm just giving us a particular situation in general you know your relationship with your family members is good let's imagine and your prayerful people you're covering yourselves uh, you know in the blood of jesus and all and you're moving on and no major issues but suddenly you notice that there is this disunity some some issue has happened and you're wondering how come uh, you know we are we are praying and we are uh, walking by the word why is this happening in my home so it's we may be fully covered but satan will try to enter even then he will try to cause something where if you accept it if you say okay you know we are we are not um, we not fully protected ourselves so satan has entered and then you give him access right because of your agreement that okay there is an open door you he has come in and this is actually happening and this is terrible like you go on with it he'll just stay he has intruded now he'll stay and then he'll carry on with his business okay so the point is there are times when he is not supposed to enter but when you notice him entering the right thing to do is to get him out you have we've got to evict him even when it comes to let's say sickness okay one particular situation and we are completely healed of it uh but you're suddenly seeing some symptoms of the same old situation and you're wondering but i was already healed and i'm doing everything spiritually physically to stay out of it why is this happening again sometimes we call it false symptoms satan is just trying to test like okay will you will you start believing that you're not healed the stronghold is still there so the moment i say yeah maybe you know uh satan has access then he starts working more all right so whenever we see him trespassing or intruding the right thing to do is to just get him out take authority in the name of jesus and say uh, satan you leave in jesus mighty name the symptom i'm already healed in the name of jesus i will not accept this symptom you know symptom you leave 
in Jesus name. So this is how we battle. Okay. Now I'm not preaching against medical care and all that. We said it many times that it's all good. Um, if you feel like, you know, you, you need to treat yourself, take care of yourself, that's fine. But when you know that you've already come through something and, you know, Satan tries to trespass again and you identify that, just take authority and get him out. Okay, so violations and intrusions are a way in which he works. There's this um, scripture from John 10.10, 10, which we know so well, which says the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So we've got to recognize those moments when he's trying to intrude or violate. And always enforce victory over Satan. Always remember that Satan is defeated. So if we see him in any situation or circumstance, declare victory over that situation. And when it comes to our personal lives, I stated earlier, it's good to be on guard and to evaluate ourselves uh, and know our areas of uh, weakness so that we are prepared. Before the enemy attacks, we are already prepared with the strategy. And James 4, 7, okay, beautiful scripture. It says, therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So notice, resist the devil. How do we resist? That word resist, if you look up the meaning of that word, it simply means stand against or oppose. Okay? Stand up against or oppose. Have you ever seen um, uh, some of these um, protests? People put up protests on the streets and then the police is coming and you know the police wants to enter a certain village or a, or a community and all the people are just standing like a chain and they're not letting uh, the police enter or some other group enter. What are they doing? That's called resistance, to stand your ground and say, no way, like you can't enter. I will not let you do this. Okay, So that is resistance. And in this scripture, we are told, resist the devil. He'll try. He'll try to intrude. He'll try to do the mind games. He'll try to enter through the open door. He'll try everything. But what did I do as a believer? You just keep standing. No way, devil. I'm not going to let you. Uh, Enter my home, enter my family, whatever is part of your life. Enter my ministry, enter my marriage, enter my church. You can pray for everything. Enter my finances, nothing. You have no access to any area of my life. You just stand there, right? You just stand there and enforce your victory, which has been given through Jesus Christ. So the scripture says, resist the devil. When we keep resisting him, what happens? At some point, he'll be like, okay, I give up. Bye. Okay, see you later. I'll come back in some other uh, situation where maybe I have a better chance. But when we keep resisting him, he will flee from you. That's what the Bible says. But now notice, there is another part to that verse. First part. First part says, submit to God. Submit to God. And then it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So as believers, sometimes we become so good at resisting the devil. Like I bind you, I cast you out, and you use all the believer's authority, textbook language against Satan and his demons, get them out. Okay, excellent. That's a good thing to do. But first thing is submission to God. Now if my life is not submitted to God, Okay, If I'm not walking in the ways of the Lord, then what happens? There are many open doors. And if I keep trying to resist the devil, it may not be of much use. Because I'm first of all, not submitted to God. How much will I resist the devil? It won't, it won't work. It's not effective. So for our resistance to be effective, it first has to begin with submission. Okay, Submitting. Or handing over or giving yourself to the Lord and saying, okay, God, you know, I, I give myself to you. I will walk in your ways. Uh, I will be obedient to you. So when I'm living like that, 
there will be fewer opportunities to resist because satan can't do anything you're already submitted now from where where can he enter not many opportunities isn't it so submit to god then resist the devil he will flee from you and uh, always enforce enforce means to to release the victory which we have we already have the victory but we've got to declare it we've got to um, when we put it out to work then we see it doing whatever it's supposed to do so release that victory we already have it enforce the victory in every area of our lives right every day every day morning we wake up and then we have so many things that we pray for enforce the victory maybe we are struggling in the area of finances you say no devil you cannot touch my finances there will be no lack declare the scriptures on it and take authority every spirit of lack i bind you in the name of jesus i speak the abundance of god over my life so just begin to battle what are we doing we are enforcing the victory of god in that area or maybe the lives of the children right your children you want to pray for different different uh, such things that are a concern every single day enforce victory so this is the way we ought to live our lives uh, and always you know take authority and command satan and his works to be destroyed in our lives and speak of the victory of the cross so this is the manner in which we overcome okay so what i'm going to do is i will just open up for a few more questions some discussion and we will wrap up for today um we will pick up with the next chapter here in the next class so any questions thoughts so far um shani i can see your hand is that a new question yes a new question so it is yeah. to the first one you were saying in terms of um when you have a great accomplishment um, yes yeah that didn't quite understand how the devil can come and then there's another question too that i have huh. let's say where somebody goes to like a restaurant and they come out and their car is broken into and they said that's nothing but the devil so it is is that when you say stuff like that when things happen that you don't expect is that is that is that opening the door more for the devil to do more stuff because that situation uh -huh. happened you said it's nothing but the devil mm -hmm. See, if we discern and then we make a statement like that, like for example, uh, this person does not use, doesn't say it's the devil, it's the devil all the time. At that one point, they perceive that it was demonic and then they just call it out. They say it's the devil. I think that should be fine if it's a one-off thing. But repeatedly, if a person is going on and on and saying, this is the devil, that is the devil, then that's an open door. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then the first question too about like, if you, if the first question was, can you explain, you said in your first point, like if you have a high accomplishment to be careful, that's the devil can, um, it was yeah. Easy. yeah, can you explain that? I didn't quite understand yes. that. Yes, yes, yes. So, see, uh, when we have a great accomplishment, we usually let our guards down uh, and it happens. So, <clears throat> I mean, I've heard um, some pastors also share this. What they say, like, let's imagine there's like this amazing um, convention that's taking place and they go, they preach, there are thousands of people, m many miracles happen, they're filled with the spirit. So the high of what they have experienced just now, Right? And they worked very hard. Let's imagine they worked for months together. They fasted, they prayed, and everything went so well. Right. So when this thing is closed off, what is the tendency for most of us? We are like, okay, now I can just take a rest. Okay, I can just calm down. I'm just going to be at home. And there, there's the temptation. Like when you're actually not on guard, uh, there are all kinds of things that you could end up doing. You know, you could end up watching something that's not godly. You could end up. Um, you know, something could happen and knowing Satan, how he's so strategic and he knows our weaknesses. So he may actually try to uh, hit at that weak spot. Because now you're not even thinking. You're, all you're thinking is, wow, I finished the work. 
Okay, so I, I don't care about anything now. I'm just going to take a great rest, and then we'll see what next. But that state is very uh, it. it um, key, that state is when we are vulnerable to an attack. So uh, we have. I mean, we need to guard ourselves, and I think it's a very personal thing for each one of us. Uh, I, the the specific areas would be very personal, uh, Shani, and we've got to identify it and just be careful of, of those areas. Okay, thank you. I, I understand. Thank See, you. a simple example, maybe finance, right? Like if I have a weakness with managing money, and I just spend, I just splurge. Now, if I if I've done well. What is the tendency? I'll be like, okay, I'll just just go shopping. I'll just go spend all my money, and then I'm thinking, how did how did all the money go? The devil did it. No, the devil didn't do it. I was in in that moment of weakness. I just indulged. So it's somewhat like that. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Question. So just in line with uh, what we're discussing, you know, it's like you have to be careful and peak of success. At the bottom of uh, failure, yeah, yeah, the yeah. thought. But I had also had a question, like you know, this go seeking um, in the past, like astrology and fortune telling is also opening a door, no? Yeah, it's not the origin. We must always consider the origin. Where does it come from? And you can trace it back to certain practices that are nowhere connected to scripture. Yeah. So then, then how do you conclude, right? So better to just stay away from all these things. Okay. So I think we have an idea about uh, you know what what the tactics of uh, Satan are and how to really enforce our victory. And if there are no more questions, we can just wrap up today's class. Is that fine, Sister? Yes, yes, Sister Lucy. In case of our children seeking God's protection in uh, in all the areas of their lives, uh, mm -hmm. be away from the weapons of the enemy. Mm. Uh, we, uh, though the children may stumble or go astray, we declaring the God's word, mm. it'll, uh, it'll, it'll work out, right, sister? Yes, yes, sister, of course. <laughs> that is what will work. We have to do it, that. It, yeah, their means their personal strongholds and all to bring down. Yeah. So, sister, see, wherever possible, the best thing to do is to teach them the word. So if they are um, coming to church with you, if you are in a, in your, you know, their age is such that you can encourage them to get plugged into church, a good life group. So if you can do that, that would be best because they will learn for themselves how okay. they can make good decisions. But that is not possible. Um, then, of course, the next best thing that you can keep doing is to pray for them, declare over their lives but ideal is if they themselves can learn from god's word nothing like it that's best mm -hmm. yes sister thank you thank you yeah sure okay, yes yes please go ahead Oh, this is kind of off topic, but I just wanted to find out when is our um, our first quiz? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, you can expect it this week. This week, so we'll have a week to complete it. I'll, I mean, I'll see uh, because this this time around, I haven't posted any assignment yet, so it also depends on the the length of the assignment and uh, the difficulty level. So based on that, I will set the timing. OK, but just be on lookout this week. Give more than a week. I'm sorry, I said, what did you say? Uh, I generally give more than a week, I said. OK, but be on the lookout this week for it. OK, sure, you can.
Ma'am, uh, just one last question. Yes. Just wondered your thoughts on this. Like, uh, uh, in um, don't you think, like, you know, as believers, uh, at times we are uh, undermining all these strategies. Now it's like eyes are open with so many things that we are discussing. But uh, just your thoughts that you know uh, we uh, we don't focus. Not it's not like focus or emphasis, but somewhere we are like neglecting or uh, you know, as believers, we kind of take it for granted that these so many things are just happening back in the spiritual realm. Mm. So uh, are you saying taking for granted all the things that we learned just now? Uh, learning when we are discussing is different. Uh -huh. As believers, don't you think we all uh, kind of, you know, ignore all these mind games and tactics and things that's just happening? Yeah. And we are ourselves exposed to so much of it. Yes. So we can pray, Akhil, like we can ask God to help us to be more serious about these matters. And another thing that really helps to be serious or to be focused is to understand the purpose that God has for us. Okay, so when we understand the purpose of God, right, then uh, we don't want to mess up in any way. You know what I mean? Uh, like, I mean, I'm just saying, okay, for our understanding, like as a minister of God, right, serving the Lord, preaching thing, uh, like I have to be so careful. Like all these years of investing in the ministry, if I end up doing something silly, Right? Something that will hurt the, the body of Christ, something that will hurt the people. I'll be derailed uh, from serving God or, you know, moving forward with God. And so, because there's a sense of purpose, God has called me to this. And therefore, you know, sacrifices will be there, hard work will be there, all that is there. But there is a purpose, like I'm heading towards this and I cannot afford I just cannot afford to, uh, yeah, get distracted because, it, I mean, you get what I'm saying, right? Like you're so, so committed to that purpose, like whatever it is that God wants for me, I think that really helps. Like if we have that, like, hey, this is my vision, this is my calling, this is where I'm headed, then it's so much easier for you to just say, hey, I, I, I'm not going to waste my time with this, I'm not going to waste my time with that, and you're passionately... Um, yeah, that oneness of heart, you're moving towards that. And then, whatever we are learning, we have to apply it if we are going to keep walking. If I, I don't apply it, or if we don't apply it, then uh, Satan will get you each time. And we can't afford it. You know. So I think a sense of purpose is very, very key. Then uh, you will use all the weapons that we are discussing here because you want to keep on track. You don't want to get off track. Yeah? That's what I'm okay, so I suppose the next seven minutes are for your reflection. You can just reflect and see how to apply uh, the different things that we have discussed. So let's just close off with a word of prayer and maybe someone from the online batch can pray today. Please unmute and pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this uh, hour of uh, study and for all the insights that you have taught us, Father. Lord, we know that in our own strength, we cannot uh, fulfill all the things that we ought to. But with your strength, Father, with, with thy grace and, and thy love and Thy guidance of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we we can live up to the standard that you have called us to live up to, Father. And like Paul says in, in 2 Timothy 4, 7, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. I pray, Lord, for all my brothers and sisters of the Bible College, that we will fight the good fight, we will finish our race, and we will keep the faith, Father. We pray, Lord, for a blessing upon our entire faculty and upon all the students and their families, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Brother Sanjay. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. And we shall meet again uh, next Tuesday for our next session. Bye for now.